Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech and we have a 5700. No, this isn't a review sample, this is a purchase sample. I wanted the XT, it got sold out and I figured, well, I'll get the 5700X anyway, or 5700 rather. And my wife's kind of mad I took her 1080 and this should outpace the 1080, plus it'll give her free sync. She's using one of my spare 390Xs. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna unbox it. I'm gonna go over everything real briefly. I'm gonna run some benchmarks and we give you guys my conclusion. There we go. I've already seen a couple benchmarks on this and everybody says it runs quieter, cooler, and overall just a little better. But, I'll be the judge of that, although I never benched my original XT because it was DOA. It's actually a little bigger than I thought. So we have your eight pin, six pin there. Uh, I would have liked this to not be red personally, just more color neutral is, is generally better, uh, but, but it looks fine. Like I think if you have a red black bill like, like my wife, it'll be perfect for her. Uh, we have your standard IO, so it's gonna be display port HDMI, display port, display port, and you do have a bio switch. So I believe it's the right side by default is a normal mode, and then the left side's gonna be a quiet mode. From experience, just leave it on normal. And then we have a total of three heat pipes here. And we have obviously the one that comes out here, and then we have two more. Those come out this side right here and then they get cold by this fan and that fan respectively. First and foremost, my apologies for the echo. My microphone's not working. I'm currently working to fix that, hopefully. You'll actually see videos after this with the microphone as a shot and it just has to be edited. But let's talk about the test system first. We have the Ryzen 5 3600 running Precision Boost Overdrive. That is cooled by Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 on top of an ASRock B450 Pro 4, a 2x8 gigabyte of G-Skill DDR4 memory at 3600 megahertz CL19. That is all powered by a Be Quiet Pure Power 11 650 watt 80 plus cold power supply. The Windows is loaded on a crucial P1 500 gig NVMe SSD. And that is all inside of a Be Quiet Silent Base 801 with the fan set at 1000 RPM, which is their max. So that's the testing methodology. Now, test system rather, testing methodology. Synthetics are done with only a few programs open for monitoring purposes. 1440p is the primary background, 1080p is the secondary background. For gaming, I am also running four Chrome tabs, including a video, Halo 3 10 hours. And in the 1080p test for gaming, I still have the desktop at 1080p. That is the testing methodology that I work with. The fan curves, with the exception of AMD, was set to my standard, which is, should be shown on the screen here. And my CPU uh, fan curve is just set to default in the BIOS. Now, let's take a look at superposition. So, this testing, just full disclosure, there's the Ryzen or the uh, RX Vega 64. It's actually on a different test system. It's old benchmarks from a 2700X. So keep in mind that the results here may not be truly indicative of what you can really expect. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Superposition has the GTX 1080 scoring first. Uh, we're just a hair under 8,000. And just a hair over 7,000 actually comes the RX 5700. The Vega 64, and in this test, this is uh, not really affected by CPU. The Vega 64 actually scored about 150 points lower. The 1660 Ti scored about 1,000 lower than that, and the 1660 scored 1,000 lower than that. Now, 3D Mark Time Spy, this is kind of interesting. The Sapphire RX 5700 actually took the crown by about 40 points over the 1080. The 1080 beat the Vega 64 by about 500 points. And then we see about a 900 point drop off to the 1660 Ti, and then another 1,000 points to the 1660. Let's take a look at some actual games here. So we're not actually showing the Vega 64 until a little bit later. 
We'll start with Rise of the Tomb Raider, the 1080. Uh, just smoked everybody. That game was so heavily uh, NVIDIA based, which is, that's fine. That's, some games are like that. Uh, the 1080 at, um, the 1080 at 1080 was right around 140 FPS average, and it dropped about 40 points to 100 or 1440p. The uh, RX 5700 by Sapphire scored 1116 at 1080p and 80 at, or 80 FPS at 1080p, or 1440p at that matter. 1660T actually scored a bit behind that, 105 and 75 respectively, and the 1660 scored 90 and 60. Now let's take a look at Ghost Recon Wildlands. Once I can actually find that test here. The 5700 actually won here, which I was not expecting. Uh, just a hair under 90 at 1080p and a hair over 70 at 1440. The 1080 was about yeah, a little under 87.5 and just a hair over 70 as well at 1440. Then the 1660 Ti scored uh, just a hair under 77 and then a little bit over 57 to 1080p with the 1660 picking up the rear, obviously, uh, 65 and 48. Now here's a really interesting test, the Division 2. And we tested this on very high settings for this uh, test. I'd actually done a previous test with ultra settings, which you'll see in the 1660 Ti or 1660 video. But the AMD cards perform really well. The Pulse actually beats a 1080, and it's not by just a little bit. It's sizable. It's between 5 and 7%, both 1440 and 1080p. Uh, we're looking at 111.82. For the 1080 at 1080p, 103, then 1440p at 76. The 1660 Ti is at 90, 1080p, and still over 60 FPS at 1440. And even the 1660, just a hair under 57 FPS, or a hair under 60 at 57 FPS uh, at 1440, and then 1080p is still just above 8. The, the GTX cards all have a curve. So, you know, Rise of Tomb Raider, 1440p was you know 101 for example where you know Ghost Recon Wildlands was 70 and then the division picked up the uh, trail here or the division was at 76 but the AMD cards you see uh, Rise of Tomb Raider didn't perform that well it did really really good in the division and then did fine in uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands so the Vega 64 in almost every case, except for super position, or uh, the three mark time spy, did slowly edge out the RX 5700, but that is a Sapphire Nitro Plus edition, so definitely keep that in mind. Uh, and it was a test system, so it's not kind of the end all be all. Now let's look at core temperature. I think that's pretty important. So the Vega 64 actually uh, did the best at 42 degrees over ambient on the core. The Sapphire actually second best at 47. Uh, the 1660 Ti and 1660 scored 60, uh, 48 and 49. And then 1080 ran the hottest at 55 degrees over ambient. Now, we're going to actually dive a little deeper into the thermals here. But max speed, this card actually boosts up to 1856, which is pretty high for an AMD card. Um, the 1660 did 1920. The Ti did 1950. And then the 1080 did 2005. Now, different architectures, different design, it's really nothing to compare, but just at rated speed. Let's take a look, and this is, I don't have a reference uh, 5700, but these temperatures are pretty darn good. So VRM, 35 degrees over ambient. The core temperature was 50, or was 47 degrees over ambient, for example. The memory, was 52.2 degrees over ambient. And the hotspot was 56.2 degrees over ambient. So my recorded temperatures in reverse order was 80, 76, 71, and 59, I believe was so the actual temperature, about 23, 24 degrees ambient. Uh, so I, I really found that quite interesting on just how well this card run, considering we're getting to the conclusion here that I couldn't control the fans. So, let's talk about my experience with this card. My wife's getting it. I'm not going to keep it, unfortunately. Uh, not because I don't want to, but I took her 1080, so she needs something as good, if not better. <clears throat> Be careful. AMD still has a lot of issues with these cards. I 
Didn't have any crashes in game except Ghost Recon Wildlands didn't want to start. I, I'm not entirely sure. I got it to start, but like the first time was weird. The problem is, is if you have any monitoring software like <coughs> um, MSI Afterburner, for example, causes the flicker. Most uh, anything that kind of does overlays causes this to flicker. So definitely keep that in mind. So if you're just gaming, I didn't have any crashes. But if you're like me and you like to tweak and play, it's kind of annoying because I'm limited. I can't even do like World of Warcraft benchmarking. Not that I had that done that anyway. But yeah. So definitely keep that in mind. But $360, $10 over what reference cost. I don't know what the rest of the coolers are offering, but this is perfectly, this is super acceptable from Big Head Technology standpoint. Having a hot spot at 80 degrees, which is, it was like 56.2 degrees over ambient, is amazing. I mean, we're talking, I'm doing 1440p, I'm in a silent base 801, which is not airflow optimized, it's not a hot box. It's better than some of the ones that have no front airflow, but it's not a high airflow case. And I'm running a Ryzen 5 3600, so perfect CPU match with it, with an air cooler. So it, it just, it's a really good car. I recommend it. I'm gonna have a link in the description below. Just heed my warning that drivers are kind of iffy and you know, you're gonna have to do some tweaking, but the fans were fine, the temperatures were great. I'm honestly glad I didn't have to touch anything, that it just worked out of the box. So maybe that's really the thing. It works out of the box, perfectly fine. You know, temperatures are good, so GPUZ was fine. Temperatures are good. Acoustics are fantastic. Is it really a big deal? Yeah, you can't see your FPS counter. Whippity-do. Most games have a built-in one anyway. Also, stock VBIOS is on this side. Towards the end of the card, towards the um, display connectors, is the silent. Do not run the silent, in my opinion. It does make it a fair bit quieter from what other people have tested, but they even said on stock, the fans are perfectly fine. They're, they're not very audible. They're better than a lot of other coolers out there. And it just causes everything to run hotter. And th that's really not necessary. So if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you disliked, hit the dislike button, leave a comment, get subscribed. Um, PC, or uh, I almost said the old name. Uh, Big Head Technology Solutions LLC was filed um, at the time of filming this. So hopefully by the time this goes live, fingers crossed, that uh, it, it is official and I can really start ramping up some other things. So really excited with that. Could not do this without everybody here. And as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech and I'll see you all later on down the road.